Eritrea's Mekseb Debesse of Germany's Bike Aid team won stage four of the ongoing Tour de Rwanda on Thursday in four hours, 21 minutes and six seconds to mark his second stage win of the competition. The 166-kilometer stage from Musanze to Nyanza was the longest of the tour and Team Rwanda Karisimbi's Bosco Nsengimana started as overall leader. But it would be a trying day for Rwandese cyclists with Bosco struggling as the rain pounded the riders along the way while defending champion Valen Ndasi Yenga suffered from low blood sugar along the tour. The race, however, finished in a sprint with Mekseb out sprinting the peloton hike uh, like on the first stage. Foreigners dominated the top five positions with Valens recovering to finish 10th, becoming the best placed Rwandan cyclist. Despite finishing 16th, Bosco retained the yellow jersey. Riders are currently on the 139 kilometer fifth leg between Muhanga and Rubabu, considered by many as the hardest of the tour. The 11th edition of the UCI's Africa Tour comes to an end next month in Morocco. The UCI Africa Tour features over 30 events of different classifications held across nine countries in the continent. But competitors and African cycling officials agree that the continent still needs more races if its cyclists are to match up to those in Europe and Americas. The Tour du Rwanda is in its seventh year since it was added to the international cycling calendar and the African Tour. Its inclusion improving the standards of the tour and as a result boosting the sport in the country. People are more, uh, more, uh, are more liking this more than football. In 2015, the African tour features 34 races across eight countries. Eritrea's Mekseb Debase, who rides for Bike Aid, is the defending champion. With Europe's circuit having over 300 races, African cyclists are crying out for more continental participation. There's few riders. It's pro professional because no half, uh, no half pace for the African because no continental in Africa. If he continental in Africa, it's good rider in Africa. Even with a few races, many riders across the continent can barely afford to compete in all of them. The costs of competition too high. But when they get a chance to compete beyond winning the pass, their target is also to attract professional team. There are many scouts who come to the races in the African tour looking for riders. Most of them are guided by age, going mostly for the younger riders. But even for us older guys, if you finish in the top five, you can still get a contract. A lack of adequate races isn't the only challenges facing African riders. Inadequate infrastructure to develop the sport and technical know-how are also major hurdles. The most challenge is um, the management of sports. Uh, with, a good, with a good management, you can find everything you, you want. You see, we have many sponsors here. We started with 80% um, budget funded by the government. Uh, now we are at uh, almost 48%. As an endurance sport, cycling has often found itself mad by the doping scourge among some of its biggest stars. Within the African tour, however, doping cases remain few. Yeah, once I thought it was not uh, an African problem uh, because, you know, Africans don't have uh, big competitions with big money in prize uh, so that they can use uh, those products. But, uh, yeah, last month, uh, this year, in, in tour over Algeria, we, we discovered that there was a case of doping. Currently, South African races offer the most attractive figures in prize money. At the Tour du Rwanda, the total amount in prize money is 23,000 US dollars divided across eight categories. In East Africa, the Tour du Rwanda is the only competition within the African Tour. But even then, it is still a category two competition. But it plays a key role, like many races of its kind across the continent, that of giving African cyclists a test at top-level competition. Selassin Karone, CCTV, in Kigali, Rwanda.